He almost got me. Good morning, YouTube. All right, it is a beautiful morning slash noon of the national championship game. If you're watching this, you are probably watching it after the national championship game. I wanna know who else. Everybody out there in YouTube land is rooting for. Comment down below on who you rooted for because I can take a roll call of all the cool fans. I know it's just for fun. We're just having fun here. Little jokes, little jokes. So yesterday when I came home, the kayaks were frozen. Okay, check that out. Check this video out right now. Check this clip out. All right, I'm back. This is the, like two days later and there's ice literally, see it? On top of the tarp. Nuts. Ice on top of my kayak trailer. There's a little indenture there, but I bet it pops out. You saw that, you saw I had a little crease mark in the bottom of the kayak. And now, I'd say it's still there. I think we're good. I think we're golden. It's supposed to warm up this week. I think it's gonna pop right back out. Now let's see if there's one in the yellow kayak. And I can't see one. That was for leaving it up for three days with it freezing and getting warm again. And they're pretty much unharmed. All right, so it is mail day. I'm headed to the post office. See if you guys sent me anything. I'm gonna be having this mailbox for probably the next 20 days and then I'm gonna move it. It's in a bad location, it's on the other side of town. I'm just gonna be switching P.O. box locations soon, so stand by. So I got this question a couple times and they were like, why are you think you're so successful if you're living at your parents' house? And I thought to myself, I took a step back from that question, and I was like, this guy really doesn't get it, does, do, does he? It's kind of the same way when I hear people say, oh, that guy lives with his mother. Well, for one, for me, my parents are older and elderly. And for me to come back and help support them and fix the things in their life that were missing from my time in the military, like, you know, remodeling their house or fixing my mom a new cupboard, I wanted to discuss this topic while I was thinking about it and I was driving down the road because sometimes there's things in life that that need to be done and I was gone for six years and my parents needed things done so when I got out of the military I thought to myself well all I need really is a place to sleep park my truck while I work on the next step in my life you know I decided to give the money that I'd be given to somebody for rent to them so it would help their life be easier and I was able to have a cheap place to live while I launched my next endeavor because most of y'all know when you get out of the military it's not the easiest transition and for me I was determined not to go back to corporate America 110% not to work for the man again so I took a step back and there's an old saying that there's four things in life that you need and that's health wealth love and happiness and what I decided is because I had been missing a lot of those while I was in the military was to bring my standard of living down I am NOT a very complex and um, luxurious person I don't I, I I get weirded out around luxurious items to where I could take a knee focus on my next thing in life take 24 months of of compressed lifestyle to try to change the next 30 years of my life. I have been able to start slowly and surely building a new lifestyle. And that's really my goal right now, is not to tell people how to do anything, it's to document my journey into the next phase in life. 
and my next phase in life is what you're seeing right now. You're getting to live it along with me and seeing how I, my intuitive thought on changing my lifestyle. So I knew, I knew getting out of the army that if I created enough passive forms of income through stocks and side selling and side hustling, generating, like I generated profit with this YouTube channel and all these other things that I could survive until I got myself going again. Uh, whether it was teaching karate or all that stuff that, I, that I've always been able to do, I knew that once I burned the bridges behind me, burned the boats, like Napoleon Hill says and Cortez said, burn the boats behind you and you've got no choice but go forward. And I knew once I did that, I was gonna be in, I was gonna put myself in a good position. I remember playing on that Gators field. Scambia High School. We used to play them when I when I was at Woodham, we played them back in my high school pitching days. For those of y'all didn't know I played college baseball. Long time ago, for the Army. I was so fired up about making this video that I had to pull over. I'm in the middle of a field. Look, in the middle of the field is where I used to play ball when I was little. The drawdown in the military gave me the opportunity when they were getting rid of soldiers and retiring them early. And if you had anything medically wrong, you retired early. They just got you out of the Army. I realized that that was my time to take the knee to change my destination, to change my course in life. Because there's two types of people in this world. The first one is people who have opportunities and take them. And the second one are people who watch other people take those opportunities from a distance on YouTube or on Facebook or just people in general that are the ones that are hating on you saying, what are you doing that for? That's dumb. You can't listen to those people. The overcoming the fear of those people. And especially when you live in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the more rural parts, I don't understand YouTube and vlogging and people walking around with a camera like this right here. All they understand is, oh, you're one of those weirdos on the internet. So that fear I had to get over, I gotta get over it. I'm working to get over it. I'm gonna conquer it. Just like Napoleon Hill says, you gotta just fight fear with every time you see it, every time it renders its head. And that procrastination to not be doing videos every day and not be getting as much content as you can. Cause that's what I'm trying to do. Look at this. I just got it from the post office. I have no idea what it is. So we're fixing to open it live. It came from Chris Crockett, Corinth, Texas. I think that's over there by Colleen, isn't it? Isn't it like... Sorry, I'm trying to make sure that I cover up your address so people don't, uh, I don't know what they do. They do stuff on the internet when they find out your address. I guess it's to me and Samantha. All right, okay, so I'm gonna wait and open this with Samantha. So we're gonna have to get back to this. One. The second letter I got is from Colin Harden. I'll cover up his address right there. He's from Milton, Florida, right here, hometown kid. Hometown, that's what I'm talking about. And he sent me some picture art. It looks like he etched out the edges of it with a little lighter. It's got a good Jack Creval on there. That's what I'm talking about, Colin. Sweet art, thanks. I'm gonna hang this on my wall, appreciate it. It's going on the billboard behind my computer, which y'all haven't seen, that I stick this stuff on. I'm building a little collage of all my, my subscribers and everybody that's awesome out there in YouTube land, and it's gonna be cool. So me and Samantha just got at Ollie's for the game. Go Tigers. She said if I wore my Alabama hat, I was disowned. Yeah, disowned. Was it? Pork rind nachos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just finished the game and Samantha is here to open the boxes. 
It's a little late. It's after the game. I had to wait for her to be here because that's what the sign says. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Chris. So open it, Samantha. He wrapped them good. It's kind of heavy. Is it heavy? Yeah. Wow. Looks um, like M&M's. Candy and trail mix and more candy. So much for our diet. <laughs> no way I'm gonna be in swimsuit <laughs> shape. Wow, this is awesome. Right. Ooh, and I have another one down here. All right, let's see what you got, Jack. Pull it out. Fort Lee, Virginia. Fort Lee, Virginia. Does that bring back memories? That's pretty cool right there. Fort Lee, Virginia. I was there. 10-009, I think was my class. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know if he can top off the sweatshirt and the candy and the trail mix. Look, I got my own four lever jeans. Oh shirt. yeah. In Clemson colors. Perfect. Thank you, Chris. Hey, they didn't have those shirts when I was there. Man, this is awesome. Those were awesome. It was really good mail call. Thanks, Chris Crockett. See? Go Tigers.